Good morning, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Honourable uh, Lady for raising this uh, important case. And I recognise this is a very distressing time for Mr. Fitton and his family. I would also like to reassure honourable members that the consular officials continue to maintain contact with Mr. Fitton and his family. Uh, indeed, they met uh, with his family this morning and we liaise with his uh, lawyers to provide consular assistance. Since his arrest in March, consular officials have visited Mr Fitton on four occasions. And we understand the urgency and concerns that Mr Fitton and his family have. We cannot, of course, interfere or seek to interfere with the judicial process of another country, just as we would not expect interference in our own judicial process. Process. That said, the British ambassador in Baghdad has raised and will continue to raise Mr Fitton's case with the Iraqi government, and this includes raising with the authorities the UK's very strong opposition to the death penalty, both in terms of its potential application to Mr Fitton and also our in principle opposition to the death penalty in all instances. Where are about? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for granting this urgent question. May I say that I am deeply concerned by the Foreign Office's engagement with my constituents' case. Jim is 66 year old, he's a geologist. He is sitting in a cell in Iraq. He has missed his daughter's wedding, and he potentially faces a death penalty. His family are worried sick. Nearly a quarter of a million people have signed a petition urging the government to help Jim. Jim's lawyer believes that representations from the British government could make a huge difference in this case, but I'm afraid the government gives the impression that they're not particularly interested or worried. Ministerial engagement has been slow. It took 10 days for the, privates, for the minister's private office to inform me that a meeting with Jim's family was not on the cards. Jim is now days away from a trial. We are told that the government won't be making the crucial representation to the Iraqi government. It is my understanding that the German government are making re representations on behalf of one of their constituents detained with Jim. Why won't the Foreign Office do the same? Mm -hmm. So I hope the Minister will be able to answer these key questions. Jim's trial is fast approaching. Will the Minister meet with me and Jim's family before the trial and before it is too late? Will he commit to making representations to her Iraqi counterpart as the German authorities are doing? Mr. Speaker, there are implications far beyond Jim's case. It fits into a concerning pattern of the UK government failing to do enough for yeah, its yeah. citizens abroad. Yeah, yeah. Can the Minister clarify her view, his view of the role of the Foreign Office in supporting British citizens that run afoul of legal injustices and draconian laws abroad, just, just uh, such as in Jim's case? Will he commit to a root and branch review of how the Foreign Office responds to situations like this. Mr Speaker, British citizens deserve the help of the British Government. Jim Fitton is potentially facing the death penalty. I urge the Minister to do everything they can do to stop this nightmare before it turns into a tragedy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I completely reject the Honourable Lady's assertions about the role of uh, the British Government in this case and other consular cases. Let me remind the House, and with your indulgence, Mr Speaker, I do think it's worth going into this in detail. On 23rd of March, shortly after his arrest, consular officials visited Mr Fitton in detention. On the 4th of April, consular officials visited him again. On the 10th of April, the British ambassador raised his case with the Iraqi authorities. On the 25th of April, consular officials visited Mr Fitton in detention Again, on the 1st of May, the British Embassy sent a note verbal to the Iraqi government on Mr Fitton's case. On the 1st of May, the British Ambassador again raised the issue of Mr Fitton's case with the Iraqi government. On the 8th of May, the British Ambassador to Iraq again raised Mr Fitton's case with the Iraqi government. On the 8th of May, consular officials visited Mr Fitton in detention. On the 10th of May, the British Ambassador to Iraq again raised Mr Fitton's case with the Iraqi officials. On the 11th of May, just today, as I said, the family met with our expert consular officials on the FCDO. We do these things not because these cases are raised in the House. We do these things because they are the right thing to do. I am proud 
I am proud of the work that our officials do both in Iraq and the consular team here in the UK to support individuals and the families of those individuals who have been arrested. We will, of course, continue, continue to raise this case with the Iraqi officials, and we will, of course, continue to liaise with Mr Fitton and his family, and we will continue to support British nationals in incarceration around the globe. Right.